My talk is about building effective mentoring relationships. Um, I think that if you're interested in being a mentor, you're going to pick up some tips here on how you can do that well. Um, if you're interested in having a mentor, then hopefully I'll give you a high standard to hold your new mentors to when you do find them. Um, but most importantly, a mentoring relationship is two-way. So what you put into it, you'll get out of it again. Um, so a really useful piece of research I found a few years ago when I first started mentoring uh, was this um, qualitative academic study that was done in 2014. Um, it was around disciplines including natural sciences, nursing, engineering, technology, not UX related at all, but the principles still hold up. Um, the participants went through a mentoring program and then they took part in this workshop. At the end of it, a four hour long workshop. Um, sounds like great fun. Uh, to answer the question, what are the key components of an effective mentoring relationship? I'm Lois Nyman. Uh, as Danny said, I'm a senior UX designer. I was previously UX lead at an agency called Convivio. Um, I've just started my own company, which is an electric camper van hire company called Wild, Wild Drives. Um, do check it out. The website is embarrassingly bad because even though it's my job, I have to do literally everything else. And when I started this company, I didn't realize how much cleaning I have to do, and I hate cleaning. Um, so anyway, do check it out. Um, Jessica, I really liked what you said in your talk about your background and kind of talking about where you came from. Um, I actually studied law at university with multimedia computing. And uh, during that expensive course, I found out I hated law, didn't enjoy it at all, hated all the reading. Uh, and in most of my spare time, I was reading about web design. And that's how I realized that's the job I really should be doing. Um, in my spare time, I mentor for a company called Springboard. I've been doing it for about two years. It's like an online course curriculum in design, coding, data science, that kind of thing. Um, so to take on this course, you don't need any design background whatsoever. And in nine months, they want to take you to a point where you have a portfolio and you can get a job. Um, and the aim here is uh, that Springboard provides students with a mentor um, and we have one-to-one -one calls and you review their work and you help them progress they want to get to. Um, so I've been doing that for two years and I think I'm okay. I'm doing all right. Um, I pulled some feedback from my previous mentees from Springboard's uh, feedback system. Um, Bill is, um, I'm actually still working with Bill. He's a veterinary nurse who wants to move into UX design. And then Sean uh, was a gardener and illustrator. And this is my favorite, the best feedback I've ever had. Lewis is the source, he's such a dude. Um, so what I really want to do is talk about like this piece of research I found during my mentoring journey that really helped me become a good mentor. Um, so there are two benefits to mentoring. There's career related and uh, psychosocial benefits. Um, you know, the career related functions help you progress in your professional development, but the psychosocial functions increase confidence, self-worth, professional identity, you know, like really having the confidence to know you can go and do a job and apply for it and you've got a good chance of going it for it. Um, so effective mentoring relationships are more than just a professional relationship. You know, it's much more than that. Um, and this study found eight different components to effective mentoring. Um, these themes come up in order of frequency. So you have open communication and accessibility, goals and challenges, passion and inspiration, a caring personal relationship, Mutual respect and trust, exchange of knowledge, mu um, mutual respect and trust again. All right, we'll, we'll find out what that really is when we get to it. <laughs> um, and a caring personal relationship again. Okay, that's mysterious. Um, so as we move through these, I'm going to reflect on some of the things that I've done as part of my mentoring. Um, and as we do that, I'd like you to reflect as well on situations you've been in before uh, where you've apply these principles or you could have applied them. And if we have time, we can chat about that at the end. It'd be great if you could share them. So communication and accessibility. Uh, these are the best tips that they found. Make time even when you're busy. Um, I try not to take on too many mentees at once. I have a maximum of two to make sure I can do it well. Um, before our calls every week, um, I spend at least half an hour reviewing what they've done, what their agendas are, what they want to talk about. So that half an hour call we have, I can be really useful and effective and get through everything they need to discuss. Um, be available asynchronously. So outside of the calls that we have regularly, um, I always say to my students, again, 
boundaries, I have quite loose boundaries. So I say to them, email me whenever you want. If you've got any questions, I'll try and get back to you within 24 hours. <clears throat> that doesn't always happen at the weekend, but I do really try to get back to them, especially to make sure they can keep pace with what they're doing and then get answers and they can progress quickly. Um, also important, do try and let mentees figure out the answer for themselves. I try not to correct them. I try not to give them the answer. I just try and find the right questions uh, to ask them to help them figure out um, how to, to, how to come to the answer themselves. So usually if they've explored a certain concept in UX or UI, I ask them, how else could you have done this? Not just push them towards the way that I think is best. Um, and again, constructive criticism, be honest, but don't be harsh. You know, you really are trying to build up someone's confidence. Goals and challenges, again, like what you can do as a mentor is you can really push people to think beyond um, their current goals. I'm working with, a, um, with Bill, who's really passionate about accessibility. And because I have a background in the public sector, I work with the NHS and the government. Uh, that's a big emphasis there. So I've really been pushing him to think about like really, really difficult forms of accessibility, like PDFs and stuff like that as well. Um, he's already thinking about applying to roles um, with a CV for a role around an accessibility. So I've been talking to him about how to make PDFs accessible, which no one really wants to do, not even the government. Um, pace is really important as well. Um, some of the people I work with want to move through it really fast. Some people don't have the time because they have other work commitments. Um, so understanding what their time commitments are and how quickly they want to move and how available you can be is really important to making sure they can get to where they want to be at the time they want. Um, learning style is so important as well. Just you know, understanding that not everyone learns in the same way. Uh, a good personal example is, of this is I was recently diagnosed with an inattentive ADHD. Um, and what that means is, is that if someone verbally tells me instructions like directions, I do not take it in at all. Um, same thing as well if someone like spells out a word in letters, I cannot piece together what that word is. Um, I used to think I was stupid. Not stupid, just different. Um, and how I apply this to students is some students do like to have feedback written down rather than talking it out. So before the call, I write out the notes. And then later on, I say to them, look, you know, I can, I can send you all my notes of all the feedback I've given you verbally. So if you want to look over it in your own time, you can. Again, helping um, students understand their long-term goals and like helping them understand where they want to get to is really important. I think um, one of the students I'm working with now said in his application that he wants an entry-level job of $70,000. And I was like, I don't know how realistic that is. I don't know what's going on in America right now, but I don't know how realistic that is. But if that's what you want to go for, let's go for it. You're going to have to sacrifice maybe some other things, some ethical things, if you really want to get that much money, but you can do it. Um, passion and inspiration. I think that, you know, passion is very contagious. If you can really expose what you're passionate about, why you got into the career you did, um, go off on one, you know, from time to time, talk about things that you really care about. That really rubs off on your mentees and just, you know, show enthusiasm for their work. You know, I don't just give constructive criticism, things that can be improved. Sometimes we just like develop ideas together on how things can go in completely different directions, how we, we can do this completely differently. How could this could be so much useful, so much more useful for people rather than just in incremental stuff of, you know, this layout could be slightly different um, or, you know, this, this feature could be implemented in a different way. It really does help increase their enthusiasm. One of the most important things is a caring personal relationship. So important, I put it in the slides twice. Um, again, I, honestly, this is probably one of the most important things I can suggest is really show an interest for someone's personal life outside of work. Um, that will really help you when they get to difficult points in their career. Um, one student, I think it was Sean, he worked as a gardener and he would get back from work, working in the blazing sun, uh, exhausted. And because I understood that about him, I knew that um, maybe I should go gentle on him on certain times, you know, when it's been really hot, ask him how his day's been. Um, another student, you know, has like an unusual sleeping pattern. So sometimes they literally just have woken up just for our calls. And because I knew that I would use them gently, you know, and not ask them too many difficult questions until they'd properly woken up. Uh, just start with a little bit of chit chat and that kind of thing. Um, mutual respect and trust is very important. Again, you know, be honest, be respectful. Don't try and be judgmental. Everyone comes from things from a different position. Um, and this is a mutual thing, you know, you can really 
that really respect each other's ideas and points of view. And, you know, if someone isn't making as much progress as they set out to do, um, usually I try and ask some questions, you know, instead of being judgmental about it, ask them how they feel they're doing, um, what do they think they could do to change that, you know, if, if they're really struggling to make progress. It could be motivation. It could be stuff going on outside of work, you know, and everyone has a work-life balance they need to maintain. Um, I found this quote in that research paper as well. You know, when the professors respect me, I work a lot harder because I don't want to let them down. I think respect is one of the most important things you can have on both sides for a mentoring relationship. Exchange of knowledge, of course, well, probably one of the things you do imagine when you think about a mentoring relationship is conveying knowledge. Again, everyone has a different learning style. So trying to find interesting ways to convey that knowledge is really good. I spend a bit of time looking for videos, conference talks, um, articles, books, different things, depending on how people like to consume that information. Um, I try and apply the theory that they're learning to real world situations that I've been in. Um, one example being the handover process from design to development is always quite difficult. So I always try and give people a heads up, you know, like you can design it this way, but if you do it, developers are going to hate you. I guarantee you. So, you know, so that these are some things you can do to make that relationship easier when you get to that point. Independence and collaboration. That's the one that wasn't on the slides before. Um, it's really important to let your mentees make their own mistakes. Um, I, don't, um, I don't try and give them the answer. I don't try and do the work for them. I think it's really important for them to try things, especially when they're working through something that has user testing. I don't try and preempt too much things that might come up because learning the value of doing user testing is really valuable for them. Um, look for opportunities to work together as well. I think like anything you can do to work on something as a team, whether it could even be a blog post or something, you know, you get them to work in a, um, you know, research in a particular area that they're interested in and you can contribute to that and release it together. That's an amazing thing for building a bond together between a mentor and a mentee. Role modeling. Role modeling was the last one. So uh, I've got some really good examples here. I think of like, one is leading by example, but the other one is sharing your mistakes and your struggles. And one of the students I'm working with right now, uh, he's developing his portfolio website, his case studies. It's already better than my website, which is awful. And I haven't worked on it for ages. Danny knows what I'm talking about, I think. I can see him smiling. Um, yeah, it's, it sucks. It doesn't have very good case studies. Um, I really need to work on it, but I'm really struggling to find the time. And Bill's doing an amazing job of being well ahead of everyone else in his cohort already writing way better case studies than I've got. Um, also important is to show your ethics and your values, show what you really care about, um, you know, show what's important about the job that you do, how it affects people's lives. Um, I work in the public sector, again, so accessibility and ethics is a big concern. Um, so something I worked with with another student is he really wanted to do a project as part of his portfolio to help people who were feeling lonely during the pandemic. So he's going to go out and do discovery research to understand how people cope. And I was like, Sean, that sounds amazing. It's a great thing to do, but you really need to think about yourself because you're going to end up having some really dark conversations with people. So safeguarding yourself and the people you're talking to is a really big um, consideration when you're doing this kind of work. Um, so those are the eight themes that we went through in the research. I really hope that you got something useful out of that. Thank you very much and happy mentoring. Thank you.